Let's now talk about securing the network flow. In the context of what we have here, um, the network flow can be categorized into ingress traffic, so traffic that is coming from clients to the workloads running in the cluster, egress traffic, so traffic leaving um, the cluster, pod-to-pod -pod traffic, so that is really the communication between pods within that cluster, and management traffic. Uh, each one of those are being secured uh, in the, and hardened in a different way. And let's kind of take a look at, at how would that work. So if we start taking a look here at the ingress traffic, the user initiates and sends an HTTPS request to the domain bicycle.contoso.com. That name is associated with a DNS A record. Um, that A record is the actual public IP address of the application gateway. Now, as that happened, um, what we're doing behind the scenes here as we receive that traffic is that the TLS um, handshake and termination of that traffic happens at the application gateway. This is needed for a few reasons. Well, the reason number one here is that we require that termination to happen at the application gateway so that the WAF uh, that the application gateway contains can then inspect traffic. So traffic is decrypted, um, inspected. Uh, there's a lot of rules that um, application gateway will go through. And then only after those rules were um, inspected, traffic can then be forwarded to the next hop. The next hop in our case here is uh, an internal load balancer. So you'd have an internal load balancer sitting between the application gateway and the ingress controller in there. Um, the application gateway once it decrypts that traffic, it re-encrypts with a second um, set of certificates here. All of the certificates are kept under key vault. So you can, we can see here down in the picture that bicycle.contoso.com is stored in key vault. Um, application Gator has access to that through a managed identity. Then once the traffic is encrypted, inspected, it is then re-encrypted. Um, with a, a different set of certificates. In this case now, we're using the, um, the wildcard here, so asterisk.aks-ingress, um, to re-encrypt that traffic and send that in a secure fashion all the way through the internal load balancer through, to our ingress controller in the AKS cluster. So as this traffic hits the ingress controller, traffic now sitting inside of the user node pools will then be able to decrypt that traffic by also using the same certificate and access through key vault. So traffic here would go and the, that pod will be able to decrypt all the traffic um, and it will do a second TLS termination. So you have two hops of traffic being encrypted. Now, that might raise a question, why would you do that? Why would you not just just send this directly to uh, the ingress controller. Again, I'm thinking that this could be, um, that you could essentially remove chunks. So you could, instead of using traffic, you could use another type of ingress controller here. So with this uh, option that we have here, you can definitely do that. It's, it's fairly easy to remove traffic and put something else in place. Now, we don't allow any traffic that has not been inspected and it's not encrypted from the application gateway to flow to the ingress controller. So we keep that very, very tight. Um, after this, what's happening there is uh, the traffic can then flow to other pods, so the workload, um, unencrypted. So that's going to be just HTTP. You could re-implement and have traffic being encrypted end-to-end -end here. Um, our documentation around this section describes um, more details of what that would um, entail. I'd, I'd suggest if you, if you have that requirement that you go and take a look at the documentation. Things you have in mind here are, are likely to be performance, latency, and, and other um, aspects. Moving on. The next set of um, traffic here would be egress. Now, I've mentioned this in a separate video. Um, the traffic that comes from the end users, the one we just saw, will flow through the web application firewall, so the top here, 
then it would go to so it's a web application firewall first, then internal load balancer, then the cluster, hitting um, traffic inside of our cluster, um, as the example that I just showed. Now, if you want to do the other way around, where you have traffic being initiated from the cluster, what's going to happen is a different flow here in orange. Um, traffic will flow down through the VNet peering. So from the spoke back to the hub. And then in the hub, it will hit the Azure firewall. And the Azure firewall will decide with rules whether or not that traffic uh, can go or not to the internet. Now, essentially what we're doing here is that we have user-defined routes or UDRs in Azure, where the next hop is the internal IP address of the Azure firewall. And that's what we're doing here behind the scenes. We're force tunneling all the traffic back to the through the Azure Firewall, and then the Azure Firewall uh, will expect and make sure that that traffic can either go or be blocked and denied. The last segment of the, of the motion and traffic that we have here uh, will revolve around management. Now, what's happening is the Kubernetes API, um, if you don't do anything, if you just leave it exposed, will really be receiving requests from any resource we don't really we really don't want that so what we can do and our suggestion here would be to use something called um, the authorized ip ranges uh, for aks where you only allow traffic from uh, a white listed range of ip addresses now whether that's uh, a user who is issuing commands directly against the api or um, another service that needs access Definitely take a look at this and don't just let that service to be uh, fully open and exposed. This is different than private clusters where you really don't have a public interface to that, um, to that cluster. That's not what we're doing here, but that's an option too. With that option, uh, there is a different set of things you have to have in mind. We do have a video um, that Ray put out specifically around private clusters. We have a link for that here. But the option for this architecture is not a private cluster for now. Um, but the use of authorized IP ranges are highly, highly recommended.